Step one tells us that we need to categorize the information system. System categorization is a way to measure how much security we're going to put on a system. The different categories are low, moderate, and high. You don't need as much security on a low system as you would a high system. The information system that we will be categorizing, of course, is the DOP network. Our chart tells us to refer to FIPS 199 and Special Publication 800-60 for guidance on categorizing a system. Feel free to review those documents for granular details, but I'm pretty much going to give you the gist of it. There are three objectives to focus on in order to determine a system category. They're called CIA. And no, I'm not referring to the Central Intelligence Agency. I'm talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality means that the data should not be seen by someone who is not authorized. Kind of like, shh, it's a secret. Told to you in confidence. In the John Hopkins Network example, if your neighbor was able to read your medical records, then confidentiality of your medical information has been broken. Integrity means the data was not modified by an unauthorized agent. To stay with our John Hopkins example, let's say your doctor sends an email saying, Hi, Jane, your test result came back and you don't have cooties. But then let's say when he sent that message, then hacker intercepted it and changed the message to say, Hi, Jane, I'm sorry, but you're going to die. You see, the integrity of that email has been compromised because the intended data has been altered. Then there's availability, which means, is this data available? Let's say the John Hopkins email server stopped working for whatever reason. Well, now you can't receive any email from your doctor about your test results. The availability of the system in this example has been compromised. Okay, so now we're getting deep into system categorization, and we'll continue to do so in the next video. But as we zoom in on system categorization, I don't want you to lose focus on the helicopter view of what it takes to be FISMA compliant. So I've made this chart here for you and I will keep updating it just so we know where we're at. Again, our goal is to make the DOP network FISMA compliant so that it can receive its authority to operate. We will do that in two parts and both parts involve six different steps from the risk management framework. Part one, and part two have three steps each. We are currently on step one, which is how to categorize the DOP network. Stay tuned for more.